in it. Okay. There you go. So welcome everyone. We're so excited to have you for another art talk for a gallery of light. And it is always my extreme, extreme pleasure to introduce to you my friend and rabbi, Robin Fisher, whose vision this gallery of light was. And we're all so happy to play in her playground and make things happen. And we're so excited to present Julie today. I am so excited to meet you too, Julie. I've heard so much about you, um, but I'm gonna hand it to Rabbi for a couple words and everyone meet Rabbi Robin Fisher. Mute, mute, mute. Robin, unmute yourself. There we go. That was because I was saying how much I love Jen and that was just <laughs> silenced. <laughs> so thank you, Jen. I adore you. And um, this is such like a star, it's such a shining star in our community. And I'm just so proud of what Marilyn and Jen and Enid and Linda have created here um, and brought everyone together to create this sacred space that really has nothing to do with our physical space. It has to do what we can share together, our creative energies and our juices and our and the spirit with which we can come together. And uh, I'm just so proud of what they have accomplished and the vision of where we hope to take this. Um, this is certainly, you know, something that is a part of all of us. And I'm just really touched, you know, next week, um, we, were, we are going to be celebrating Thanksgiving. It's a time of um, expressing our gratitude. And I'm just grateful. And I know that all of you are. Maybe we can all be thinking about the next week ways that we can express our gratitude by what we can give and be for each other, sharing compassion and love and kindness and uh, making this world a little bit brighter and shinier because we are, we are all together, together and because we are grateful. I'm hearing back. Sorry. My daughter is putting on the speaker. I'm hearing back. You guys need to be quiet, Mama. Mama is okay. Um, okay. Sure. Yes, you Okay, let's, uh, to start, let me um, try to first mute everybody so that we don't have that in case somebody isn't muted. There we go. And now, where's Julie? I'm going to unmute myself for a second so I can. Oh, you get to my... speak too, Mary? I do. I get to. I do. Okay. Sorry. Sorry, everybody, but yeah, I can't go I without. I can't. I can't. I can't. <laughs> I'm trying not to. I can't go without. And I'm hoping that you've shared your screen with Julie so I that did. You, you did. You're so good. So good. What will we do without you, Rabbi? You're a technical oh, wizard, you know? So um, I see so many of our artists from the Gallery of Light on here. We want to encourage you to enter your work in the shop that we hope to open soon. It's a great deal. Hope you'll, you'll be participating in that. Where else can you put your artwork somewhere for an entire year for 25 bucks? Nowhere, right? So without, you know, further advertisements. Um, I want to introduce my friend and fellow artist, although she's just like woo up there. We, we found out we had some of the same teachers, which I think we knew, although she listened to him and I unfortunately did not. And, and as a result, she turned into this most magnificently sensitive, incredible artist I, I know this is true. I have that wonderful opportunity of going to my brother's house and seeing her work hanging over the couch. And every time I see it, I just fall more and more in love with Julie and her work. And I think you will too. This is a wonderful life story. Take it away, Julie. Thank you so much. That's so sweet of you. Well, let's uh, start. Let me go to my advanced settings. Please forgive me while I do my techie savvy work here. <laughs> Now, let me get rid of my Zoom channel. All right. First of all, I want to say good evening to all of you, and I want to welcome you. I want to thank Rabbi Robin Fisher and Jennifer and Marilyn and all those who work behind the scenes uh, building such a wonderful series for the community. 
Thank you to all of you for being here this evening. I know it's a Tuesday night and our time change <laughs> has uh, brought the sleepies early. So I thank you for fighting your sleepies and for being here tonight. Uh, tonight, I will present to you my artist talk titled Entwined Silver Point. I will take you on a journey through my artistic career. Now, my name is Julie Orsini Shaker. I am an artist since basically I could hold a crayon. <laughs> and um, I am an art teacher of 29 years. I teach at Michael Kropp Senior High School currently. Uh, prior to that, I taught at um, my old alma mater, which was Miami New Orleans Senior High. And then prior to that, I was, uh, my baptism by fire was North Dade Middle. Uh, where I started my first uh, teaching part of my career. Uh, but ever since I've been an artist, <laughs> always struggling, you know, to try to get that, uh, the work done as well as teach at the same time. Now I'm gonna take you through the beginnings. Uh, this art piece that you're looking at right now is an Arshus, um, it's a drawing, it's done on Arshus paper. It was completed during the year, uh, uh, 1983 to 1984. It's a portrait of my niece titled Joey. It's 30 by 40. At this time, I was right out of junior college and I had gone to Miami-Dade Community College where I received scholarship. And um, from that point, um, I received my Associates of Arts from Miami-Dade. And then during this time, I was studying and volunteering under a photorealist artist who was introduced to me through a friend of mine. Simultaneously, um, immediately right after I finished with, um, with Miami-Dade, I had started on to FIU, uh, working on my Bachelor's of Fine Arts. And this, like I said, is a pencil drawing on Arsha's paper, uh, 30 by 40. This uh, composition that you're looking at, titled Through the Looking Glass, it's from my graduate show, um, and it was in 1980, sorry, 1990, it was. Um, this piece is 40 by 60, and it's graphite on Arsha's paper. Um, I received my Bachelor's of Arts from Florida International University in 1990. And later on, this piece was uh, put in a show. It was a group show. Uh, it was selected, juried in. Um, in a show in Corpus Christi, Texas, as well as in Chautauqua, New York. Now, this piece here is titled Night Cries. It was done in 1999 and it's 40 by 60. It's a pastel on gray tone paper. Um, at this time, I had gone back to FIU, taking classes part-time in figure. And later I had gone on to my sabbatical where I had hoped to finish academically with my master's of fine arts. I took a sabbatical that year, but then I ultimately had to leave to go back to work because uh, life had kind of taken a turn. This art piece was included in a juried show in the Woman Made Gallery, in which I received a $2,000 uh, best in show prize, which I was pretty happy to receive. <laughs> Next piece, uh, this piece is called Promise, and it's an oil painting on canvas. It's eight feet by 10 feet. And this piece actually was in a show in Chautauqua, New York as well. And it was juried, by, um, juried in by uh, Peter Tripp, Trippy uh, was his name. And it also received, um, it was in a show in West Palm Beach at FAU. Uh, this piece was also included in a group show in an all Florida show in Melbourne uh, gallery, which actually won me a solo show. And uh, this, was, this piece was included in the solo show as well here, actually in this piece here, this is a 16 by 20 piece. Um, I had kind of made a recommitment after that winning uh, that I started in on my mission of uh, completing some works uh, there's a much more work that I do have, but I just took the highlights, you could say. <laughs> so please forgive me if not everything is here. Um, so I was still persistent in getting my painting done 
And this piece here is 16 by 20, it's a la prima. I was practicing, you know, looking at the figure and looking at the human and, and working impromptu from, you know, straight with the paint, a la prima style is what it's called. And I was working as an art teacher. Um, this whole time <laughs> from uh, the time of 1993 on, I've been working as an art teacher steadily. Here's a close up so you could see it a little bit better. And now this piece here, 16 by 20, it's oil on canvas, a portrait of, my, of, um, of myself uh, with a narration. Uh, this is actually came from a childhood dream, this uh, idea, uh, oil on canvas again. And this piece, uh, it's a portrait of my daughters and uh, with um, the protector, you could say Ganesha um, with uh, a, a pattern in the background uh, symbolizing Ganesha. Uh, 16 by 20 oil on canvas. Um, more than just a portrait, the pattern in the background of Ganesha, whom in Hindu thought is uh, the remover of all obstacles. Um, the people around me always became, you could say, the models of my work. Now, actually, during this time, <laughs> I tend to um, divert within, at this time I was working on that solo show, but I tend to divert a bit and practice. So that's where those other two came into being. And this actually was a part of that solo show that I was explaining to you uh, that I became a part of um, through that winning of that larger piece. Uh, this piece is called Delirium and it's a uh, 16 by 20 oil on canvas. And it was in a so that solo show in Melbourne uh, called Four Corners is what I titled the show. And you'll see most of the work in this series uh, deals with women, uh, mostly lustrous backgrounds, um, fabrics, uh, and very tactile kind of work, you could say. Here's another piece, it's called After It's Gone, same show, I'm <laughs> building that series. Uh, it's 56 by 68 oil on canvas. And again, you know, using my children and uh, people around me to create um, my work. Best uh, models are around you. <laughs> and now this piece here called Slumber. It is 24 by 48, it's oil on canvas. Um, after this actually, I received um, what you call the, uh, an award to, uh, to go to the Portrait Society. They had a convention. And um, I was honored a, uh, a scholarship uh, to go there free. And uh, the only thing that I had to take care of, of course, was my, uh, my room and my plane ticket there. But my entry into uh, watching the face off and all the other exciting things that happen at the portrait show, um, I was a part of. And in addition to this, um, thereafter, I received um, a tiger tail grant to study with Stephen Asalet uh, during this time period as well. Now, this piece is uh, 18 by 24. It's the beginning of a series that came from an artist residency thereafter. Um, the, I, I, again, <laughs> I get pretty lucky sometimes. And um, I got a scholarship to go to the Vitlisil um, Artist Residency, it was in New York and it was all expenses paid. Um, the only thing I had paid for was my food and um, my travel, but I was lucky enough again to get the Tiger Tail grant to supplement my travel. Um, while I was there, uh, they took care of my supplies. They took care of, uh, they gave me $200 for supplies, $300 for studies at room and board, uh, free <laughs> um, and a beautiful studio that um, I was so happy to be a part of. And it was such a beautiful moment in my time, actually in my artistic career. It uh, kind of, um, it was my first, uh, you could say the art residency. And for an artist, it's one of those things, uh, an art residency is kind of one of those things that kind of open a door for you um, spiritually as well as uh, physically. And um, it helped me in my way to kind of reaffirm that, you know, my, my purpose as an artist and a teacher 
uh, both. Um, so these pieces, I came in, I wanted to be ready. I had a bunch of primed canvases that were 18 by 24 that I rolled up inside my, um, inside my uh, suitcase. Um, they were all on uh, primed uh, canvas. Uh, this piece um, is 18 by 24. And what else can I say about this? Oh, it, like I said, it was in Spark Hill, New York. It was in the mountains in New York. So, and it was only about 25 minutes from the city. So I was able, like I said, to take on classes at the Art Student League while I was there because they gifted me money in order to do so. Um, it took me from my family, but it gave me a time to really dedicate myself to create which uh, was very beneficial. And those artists that are out there, you'll, you, know the, you know the story. <laughs> and now this one too came from that time period. Uh, this is an 18 by 24 oil on panel, this one. Um, like I said, I brought some that were rolled and I also brought some panels that I had pre-gessoed and uh, toned them before I came in because I wanted to come in and hit the ground kind of running while I was there. There's some other figurative work that I did do while I was, while I was there as well, but unfortunately, I apologize that they're not in this slideshow. Um, this piece, again, came from that particular time period as well. This is um, 18 by 24. Again, this piece was on panel as well. And I basically, you know, came in, I wanted to start right away. So I, I started with the discards that I could find around the room here and there, making them my subject. I thought I, I, I could make them beautiful. <laughs> now, uh, this piece here um, called Grand Manor, this is 56 by 68. It was um, during this time. Uh, that I was again at the Art Student League and uh, back up in the uh, state of New York. Um, this came with my second um, time going back. I again received another scholarship to go back and also a travel grant at that time as well. So um, this came from another body, a series from that another time period at that particular center on the, my second um, art residency at that time. And actually in this piece, I, 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 I love the story um, involved in this. I remember I was sitting on the subway and each time I went on the subway, trying to gather my data from my photographs and my sketches, um, I, I somehow got involved in, because I, I guess I was coming back so late, um, the, but the, the uh, subways were not as full as I wanted it to be because <laughs> I was trying to gather my references uh, for my painting. So here I am uh, gathering different photos and uh, I thought to top it all off this one day while I was sitting there and I, I figured, my goodness, you know, I want a little more, want a little more. Lo and behold, uh, on the next stop, the, the subway opens up and a guy walks in with a harp and I just said, man, this is it. So I grabbed him and I went ahead and I put him into the composition as well. And here's a detail. People, you know, on the subway, reading paper, drinking coffee. And here's another one from that time period. Like I said, the second um, time that I had gone to New York for my um, art residency. Um, 18 by 24, this is oil on canvas. And this is 18 by 24 oil on uh, canvas. And now I came back to Florida, <laughs> but I still brought New York with me. And I started a composition called Lyrical Journey. Um, I made uh, three panels, which you're about to see. This is one of them. This is one of the panels. It's 48 by 79 and it's oil on canvas. And it's from this series that I started when I came back home to Florida, um, bringing still New York with me. And I, I, this was kind of inspired by waiting in the subway. And as I looked to the other side, it was, it was uh, looking, it was almost looking at a painting. Um, and strangely enough, these paintings are, are pretty much a similar size as for, well, a little larger, but uh, proportionately similar to the spaces in between the pillars. As you look to the other side, I saw these uh, almost paintings in front of me as I looked to the other side of the subway. So I took it home with me in these images. Here's another one, same size. All three of these are the same. And this one. So all those three together. 
Now, another thing that happened to me while I was there the second time in New York, um, I had dabbled with a pencil on, can on a gessoed, uh, prepared uh, masonite board. And while I was at the Art Student League and I was purchasing some supplies uh, downstairs inside the uh, supply store at the checkout, I noticed something that looked like silver point that I had always read about. Um, I read about Da Vinci using it and a few other, you know, Michelangelo, a few other people who had used it in the past. Um, and then when I was at checkout, I spotted it. And I asked the guy at the, at, the, at the desk, I said, is this Silver Point? And he said, yes. And at that time I had taken a habit of drawing on uh, gessoed masonite boards and I kept them inside my bag uh, because as I was traveling in the subway, I, I carried these like little four by sixes, which I'll show a few of you, a few of them in a few seconds. Um, with these pieces, I, I, I took out the panel and I tested it. And I was amazed that I was able to get a mark onto that surface. And that's where Silver Point came into my life. So here was my first experience with, um, this was uh, graphite onto, uh, onto the gessoed masonite board um, that I, was, I had started before I went to New York. But I noticed that the, it would smudge off the graphite from the board. So that's where this silver point came into being. And this is a silver point. Uh, this is actually from my bag that I would carry. And I would, um, I, I used the silver point in the subway drawing these small uh, four by sixes. This is a four by six. And there's a few more, I gave them away to a few friends. So I apologize, I don't have them in my, uh, in my slideshow but this is what they kind of look like. And this is silver point. So this is where it all started. Now I come back home with the silver point and here I go crazy. <laughs> Starting with my 36 by 48 panels. Um, these are three um, 36 by 48 panels. This is titled Awareness Entanglement Departure and it's silver point on gessoed masonite board. Now the only disadvantage with working at this size at least at the time that I started this is that they didn't make boards uh, that, that were this size. So I had to prep them myself. And this is masonite um, that I started with, uh, but I noticed they were a little heavy. So I went to a light, more lightweight material and I'll, I'll share that with you in a minute. Here we are again um, with these images that I started when I came back home with the silver point. Uh, this is called The Giver. It's a generational piece. I, again, I've been using people around me that I love, a tree of life behind them, shells inside their hand, um, and it's silver point on gessoed masonite. Now, this piece uh, was actually done at my residency in 2013 um, at the Vitlisil again. Uh, the same center where I had, I, I just fell in love with this area. It was a small house in the middle of the mountains and with five rooms and some uh, more contemporary um, studios off to the side. The second time I went back, they put me in the contemporary studio and I had a huge studio, it was beautiful. Uh, this piece is 40 by 60 and it's on gessoed, uh, gessoed uh, gator foam. I was experimenting because the gentleman that I actually learned from uh, in the beginning, uh, he used uh, gator foam in the, uh, with his work and uh, it, it was a lightweight material and it was also a little bit sturdy. Uh, it's made with a little bit of a plastic, um, you could say a covering that um, you're able, and then paper on top to where the gesso can take to the surface. So I put about uh, 10 coats and sanded in between and I was able to draw on this surface. So, uh, and this piece was uh, purchased by a um, art collector and uh, Marilyn's brother. So um, here you are, this is one of the pieces. Now, I then went on to doing two panel pieces. This is 230 by 70. This is in twine number two, and it's from that same period, that same um, residency. Uh, this is what I did during that time while I was there. Uh, this is again, Silver Point on gessoed Luan board because I was experimenting with surfaces. 
And then here again, the uh, Luan board, uh, this is uh, six by 13. Um, and this was done during my time there. Uh, this is a neighbor that um, lived near next door. I had some, because when I came to New York, I wanted to come in kind of running. So I was, I took the um, image at the airport of the child and the mother. Oh, oh, one more thing too, I noticed that. Let me go back, I apologize. Uh, the backgrounds, um, the nature that was around me started to come into my drawings. Um, the foliage that I found in the mountains, I, I just had to put it in there. At first it was just the, the figure of the mother and child. And then I, I was sitting there looking outside my window. I said, man, I gotta get this in here. So I decided to put it in. And that too, in the backgrounds of this composition, this was a couple that was living actually um, there on the Vitlisol campus. They helped out uh, with the premises and they helped me. They, they actually, this is now the second or third time that I had been back. So they, they got to know me well and they uh, helped me with the modeling. And now I'm back to this piece, which I just talked about. And now next piece, 14 by 16. This is in twine number three from that same series, Silver Point on the one board. And then we have the 18 by 18 silver point on gessoed Luan board. Um, again, that same, the same people, um, I just wanted to capture her face one more time. Uh, and I, I, I find when I work, I, I tend to, you could say it's practice. <laughs> I tend to um, find areas and then I, I want to uh, conquer certain aspects and I, I, I always will try smaller versions of the same thing in different areas. So I might make another composition with the same thing um, just for practice. So this is, you could say practice 18 by 18 silver point on gesso with Luan board. And this is later on, this is actually recent, um, an iguana. This is 18 by 24. I'm back here working, teaching and creating. Um, now this one here, I had the pleasure of again, going to a workshop at the Art Student League again, and Tiger Tail helped me out with a grant there um, for travel. And I spent um, my time in Jersey uh, with a girlfriend of mine and she, she gave me room and board while I took a workshop with Cosa Vavagasic. And a funny story about this is that, um, I actually lost the first painting. <laughs> so this was done in two days um, when I lost that, that first painting. And uh, this is, uh, like I said, um, 18 by 24. And it's uh, oil paint on linen from a figure model study during Kosovo Vagasic's workshop for portraiture. And then here is one of the, um, our teacher shows uh, that I uh, submitted a piece. Uh, they wanted a selfie. So I did a 30 by 40 acrylic on gessoed uh, board and it was toned prior to starting. And I thought I'd you know, put myself along with nature uh, because uh, nature is pretty much a part of me, believe it or not. <laughs> um, I love kayaking and a few other things. And we'll talk about that later. Um, then recently I, bef I, I was given a, um, another residency, but this was at the um, star residency for teachers. And this was located in uh, Minnesota Key, Florida, Englewood. Uh, they put me in, a, I had a large studio space, uh, but this is prior to me going. I just wanted to get my hands started uh, back up again, you know, working on a full body series. So I started working with um, some refraction and, and distortion of the human form. Uh, this is a 12 by 12 and I call this the underwater series. And this is oil on gesso Luan board. And this is 14 by 16 from the same series. And it's again, oil on gesso Luan board. And this is 14 by 24 oil paint on gesso Luan board again, working with distortion underwater. This again is, uh, this one is uh, 14 by 24 and the same principles with distortion and water. And then here's the 36 by 48 um, oil on gessoed Luan board. Again, um, 
working with distortion and working with oil paint. Now, while I was in the star teacher residency, this happened in 2019, Minnesota Key, like I told you, is four panels. Um, each panel is 38 by 72. Um, and as a matter of fact, simultaneously, I had applied for uh, the Masters of Art Education. I decided to go back and complete my studies because uh, they were not done yet. I had taken a long hiatus from uh, my educational plan. Um, but of course, you know, I'm working and teaching and doing my art at the same time. Uh, this piece was done during that residency. And this is Silver Point on gessoed Luan board. I'm finding that Luan board seems to work the best for me in the sense of its permanency. The only negative I have with it is that sometimes if it's left out in the South Florida environment, it tends to um, get a little, sometimes it warps a bit if it's not properly mounted. And this piece is a part of it. Just thought I'd give you a better look at it. Silver point on gesso glue on board. And here now, you know, I'm, I'm putting the figure with nature, um, getting into a lot of foliage here and there, making this mystical setting with nature. Call it magical forest. This is the middle, um, the second panel. I have iguanas, I have uh, peacocks, and I have herons and egrets, um, some banyan trees in the background, air plants in the background, a dog, a couple, <laughs> a girl resting on a log, while the peacock uh, kind of makes its way past her. I just basically want to show how um, the biodiversity of uh, nature, how um, things can live together, how an iguana passes right by, <laughs> by, a, by, a, by a bird and doesn't even bother it. <laughs> and they look so ferocious. Um, this is a, again, the last panel of that full uh, composition and it's silver point. This is a part of the last panel. And then this summer, um, I am now back at FIU and I'm taking courses, coursework with uh, Professor Chang is his name, a uh, wonderful artist and teacher. Um, and this is my um, work with portraiture. So I did a series of portraits with him, uh, 16 by 20 oil on canvas. This is a um, one composition. This is another 16 by 20 from a model. This is a master uh, copy, a uh, homage to Sargent, 16 by 20. And this is a portrait of my daughter, 16 by 20, oil on canvas. I'm oh, sorry, wait, this is 18 by 24, oil on canvas. And then they asked me to do a self portrait and I, I went a little bit overboard. Uh, I went to 24 by 36 and oil on canvas. And then on my own, um, I tend to explode a bit. For some reason, smaller canvases are harder for me. And this was on my own time uh, away from the portrait uh, during my, in my studio, 36 by 40 uh, portrait of my daughter and um, a little storyline behind it. Uh, with the uh, lamp that is usually used during Hindu thought when a person uh, travels on to the other side um, when they cross over um, a whole year um, during Hindu thought and Hindu ideology, it's, uh, it's, it's a custom to burn a, a lamp every night um, for a whole year. It's just to uh, give the deceased um, human being a passageway to um, Nirvana and to their um, state of final rest. And then this piece here was done um, 30 by 40, this is 30 by 40 oil on canvas. This is my daydream with 
H.W. Waterhouse. And this is again, a part of that portrait class um, that I decided to go a little bit overboard and uh, turn this in <laughs> along with everything else. And then this piece also happened this summer. I'll, I was really busy this summer. <laughs> and um, this is 58 by 68 Nightmare with Odd Nerdrum and J.W. Waterhouse. Um, I composed this in Photoshop first, and then I used that reference to help me paint my painting. Okay, this is oil paint on canvas. And then this summer also, we got started on landscapes um, within the class. And this piece comes from that, uh, that, that time during the summer, 16 by 20, oil on canvas. And then this is also 16 by 20 oil on canvas. And then again, I apologize, I tend to explode and I need a larger canvas. And then I will go to a 36 by 36. Uh, this is abyss, I, uh, this was included into my uh, lessons, uh, into my subject, but yet I, I showed it to the class. Um, but this is during the same time that I'm working on the other landscapes. I kind of had to explode and do this one. Um, my 36 by 36 oil on canvas. Um, uh, it actually happened because I had ordered canvas and I was going to do an orchid actually with this interesting pattern that I had made some time ago. And then when I saw the canvas was really um, amazing quality, I decided uh, no better time than the present to continue with that underwater series and uh, do a few more. Um, and I gained the liberty of doing it on this canvas, which I was happy to acquire, okay? And then this is the second panel of Abyss. Again, this is 36 by 36, two different panels, the same size. And then also, like I said, I was doing the landscape class at that time. And this is uh, one of the lessons from that time or one of the paintings that I did from that time. 16 by 20, I call it waterfall. This is actually a place that I visited in New Hampshire. Uh, this is uh, one of Miami sunsets uh, and it's 16 by 20, again, from that same time period, uh, which was this summer. It was really busy this summer. <laughs> same two happened here. Uh, this is another art piece that I created. It's oil on canvas, 16 by 20, called Water's Edge. Um, this is actually the location I used to come to during COVID and I would sit, rest my eyes on this beauty because uh, nature and the beach and water is one of my uh, calming factors in my life. And uh, it was at this, at this time they had sectioned it off and we couldn't go past the, uh, we couldn't go on the boardwalk. So I used to basically park in my car and, and just watch the water for a while. And this is another piece uh, from the same summer time, this, this summer, 2020, uh, during COVID. Uh, this is a 12 by 28 oil on canvas titled The Edge. Now, I thought I'd also show you some hummy moments in my life as an artist and a teacher. Uh, this was Appleton Museum where um, my piece was uh, put into a show and it was the Inspired Lines uh, drawing show in 2016. And my hummy moment from that time, I remember uh, delivering my piece and I, I usually, when I deliver something, I come with a screwdriver, I'm ready to like install, do what I have to do. The guy just, the gentleman in the back of the museum said, he's hand, he takes his white gloves, he puts them on and he takes my artwork and he says, oh man, that's it, thank you. And I was so shocked because that, I had never really gotten that kind of pleasure where someone is to take my artwork and, uh, uh, with white gloves uh, to the receiving party or the receiving area. Um, this was actually the piece that was put in that show uh, in twine number two from that series that I created of Silver Point on Just Luan Luan board. And another humming moment is when I was invited 
to, um, we were actually at a date art educators meeting and I was able to see my art piece installed at the home. And I will tell you, uh, Marilyn, I had to take a break and I had to go to the bathroom for a bit and, I, and I, a little bit of tears came out. <laughs> so thank you. And um, thank the art uh, collector who purchased it. It was beautiful. I was, it was so happy and thankful to see it in, in a, installed in, in a home and, and with this beautiful framework uh, behind, around it. And it was so beautifully framed. And then another homey moment, just this summer, um, my, one of my pieces, uh, they, um, someone I know, they wanted a print. They couldn't purchase the original, but they purchased a print. And then she took a picture of when it came to her and it was, she mounted it on her wall and shot a picture of it to share with me. And now behind the scenes, uh, I thought I'd share with you. This is my transportation that where I'll usually throw my artwork up on top and strap it to the top of my car. This little vehicle takes me anywhere I gotta go, at least for the last uh, five to six, actually I've had two cars pretty much the same kind and they always have racks up at the tops for my kayaks as well as my art. So this is how I get my work tran uh, transported from place to place if I need to. Um, and this is my, uh, you could say my, um, artist, uh, uh, free space uh, art studio. This is outside of my apartment area where I will usually set up and, um, and create my uh, surfaces. Uh, actually, this is prior to me going to the star residency um, in Minnesota Key. I wanted to come in, like I said, hit the ground running. So I wanted to make sure my surfaces were prepped before I started. And then when I got there, I was pretty much enthralled by the fact that the area that I was in was pretty much like I had already imagined. I had come in with a plan and a Photoshop scene from that I had created from uh, using um, Tropical Fairchild Gardens as my reference and, and T.Y. Park as my reference. And then when I got there, I was totally enthralled by the environment, how uh, it kind of echoed what was in there in my composition. Now, this is what my apartment kind of looks like. This is my apartment slash living room slash studio space where I put, make my, some of this art. And uh, this is what it looks like on a crazy busy day. And this is actually a series that, I'm, that I just finished up with and um, thought I'd share with you. This is again, how the space looks and uh, during the busiest times. Now, my teaching moments, I thought I'd share a few uh, highlights from my teaching moments. Um, these are my kids that we are at Perez Art Museum. This is some of them. And this is our most, I think uh, students not only learn in the classroom, but it's very important to take them out so that they could actually see and witness the work uh, more than anything else. I think that right there molds an artist uh, of the future generations. Uh, this is another picture from, I believe, that day. And I, I also practice yoga and I teach yoga. So I always uh, make my kids uh, do a yoga pose. Now, this next composite, this next piece is uh, 30, by 30, 30 feet by 30 feet that my kids put together. We work with, with Xavier Cortado in the HOA water, uh, underwater uh, project. And my kids, um, we came in at eight, uh, nine o'clock, and we finished up by around three, three thirty. And this was the mural that we helped to create. And my kids and I having fun uh, doing our photo op opportunity there. And then I've had some um, some successes in the sense of uh, teaching what I know to my colleagues. Um, I've had two opportunities. One was at the National Art Educators Association. There was a um, conference that I taught at, as well as the Dade Art Educators. Um, I taught there. This was my classroom, actually, that I did my professional development. Um, I set up three stations for my students to kind of practice with the silver point. I, I took them through how to do silver point and different ways in which you can create with Silver Point. And then here I was uh, opening up the meeting. They asked me to do a few stretches at the Pam Museum. So uh, 
I thought I'd share that with you. And then on my downtime, a um, few things that I thought I'd let you know too about is that I just got Secondary Art Teacher of the Year Award um, through the Florida Art Educators Association. Now downtime, you'll find me up in the air with my daughter or you'll find me kayaking. Um, my favorite two sculptures, here they are. And on the weekends, it's the best mommy sandwich in the world. Um, and I thought I'd also humbly thank my family for putting up with uh, building crates in the middle of the living room. And I wanted to thank some of my art teachers like Ms. Sweeting, Ms. Mrs. Sharp, Mrs. Renaud, Mrs. Reif, Ms. Tuzette, um, Professor La Rosa, Professor Corneliuson, Joseph Nicastri, um, Professor James Cooper, uh, Professor Kate Kratz, Oliver Cossey, and um, Kurt, uh, Mr. Gervitz, uh, Stephen Asale, Kosova Lagasic, Michael Grimaldi, Professor Chang for, for teaching me the value of the arts. And I was so thankful uh, to be and fortunate to be taught by some of these amazing teachers. And I also want to thank my students for being an inspiration to me and to continue. And I also thought I'd share with you and let you know that I, my work will be at Frost Art Museum for my um, Masters of Art Education graduate show. Um, they will also have a virtual uh, reception on December the 12th. And if any of you are interested in seeing more work, you're welcome to visit my website. And again, my name is Julie Orsini Shaker. And um, I thought I'd also let you know a few things. Uh, Gallery of Light um, made this possible. And I want to thank everyone who was involved in getting this evening together. And uh, they have a, a program coming, uh, Hanukkah, the Festival of Light. It's, um, as I see, on December the 12th as well. So um, maybe you could hit up both places. Uh, maybe you could check out my. Um, virtual exhibition as well as the Gallery of Light, uh, Hanukkah Fest um, Festival of Light. And then there's a art talk that's happening on January the 19th at 7.30 to 8.30. Um, it's an art talk again, and this is uh, by Dr. Joel Hollander. And then the next art talk Tuesday on December 22nd from 7.30 to 8.30. It's a tour of Windward Walls by Desiree Capote. And then on, in January 26th, um, they have from 7.30 to 8.30 of uh, photo travels uh, presented by guest artist, Alice Goldenhagen. And I wanna thank all of you again and thank everyone who made this possible. Totally awesome. Are you guys all blown away? I know I am. Thank you. I am so inspired. Oh my goodness. I know. And, so and I have to tell you, Enid has just taken up drawing again after how many years, Enid? I don't know. Oh, good. A few. A, a few. few. 30 something. Yeah. But what so, I think, I, go ahead. No, go. No, go. Somebody well, go. I was gonna. I was just gonna introduce Enid Garber, my dear friend and colleague at the Gallery of Light, and she is going to read from the chat room the questions that were popping up, and not only the questions, but all of the wonderful things that people were saying wonderful. as you just, were just as you were talking. So wonderful, wonderful. Thank you. Okay. I don't know what happened there. Okay. What's it called? Silver point. Yes, if okay. any of you have any questions, you're welcome to ask me anything too. Well, um, let me go to the questions sure. then. Sure. Um, your uh, experience in the subway, do mm -hmm. you ever get any negative responses from people? Are you taking photographs of them? Are you sketching them? <laughs> Actually, there were times when I was sketching and um, there have been times that I have models that just quickly, abruptly get up. And then, mm. and then I have some that when they see me looking at them, they'll pop their arms back and they'll just sit there and pose for me. 
<laughs> so I get, get two reactions, two yes. different reactions. So I, I, I haven't had too much trouble with uh, taking photographs for some reason. It's pretty, people are pretty cooperative. Um, another question, the models that you use, you use people in your family, how long do they sit for you? And do you also use photographs yes. as well? I do use photographs. As a matter of fact, sometimes I even morph things together. And that's the biggest challenge. Uh, sometimes like I'll have an idea, I have a, a scene in my head and I'll use a, a model and ask to take a photograph of them. And then sometimes I might change it uh, for the purpose of, of the story that I, or the narrative that I want to create. Um, it would be ideal to have models, but sometimes it's not, um, it's not accessible. Yeah. And then your underwater paintings, are those also uh, done from photographs? Yes, that was done from photographs. Okay. And could you um, give more of an explanation of this silver point process? Someone was very interested in that. Okay, well, um, the process, I first, um, I get the Luan board, I coat it with gesso, uh, and I sand in between, uh, trying to make it as smooth as possible. I've noticed when I have larger spaces, I'm able to get a smoother surface. Um, and it helps with the production of that. And then um, with the silver point, silver point is basically metal point, it's working with silver. Um, and you basically uh, slowly, um, you could say, uh, veil it on, uh, or lay, or you can say, using the side of the silver point, uh, you slowly add value a little at a time, pretty close to what the way you would work with pencil. But the only difference is that you're working with metal, and it's harder to erase. Um, actually, it's better. It is better if you do not erase. Um, but yet, if you have to. You can use sandpaper, but you got to be very careful. You have to make it as minimal as possible. <laughs> so let me go to some of these wonderful compliments. I feel so privileged to be looking at this work while with some awesome artists. Stunning work. Seriously, I don't think Julie was lucky. They were lucky to have her. Thank you. Incredible detail and concentration. The faces have such amazing expression. Would oh, you answer that one about the silver point? Um, if someone does sit for you, how long would they sit? Well, Could if you get someone? Sit, well, if I do have someone to sit for me, I consider that a complete luxury. And they'll sit maybe for two hours, one to two hours with breaks in between. So that's that's not bad. Wow. <laughs> and then, oh, I've been lucky though at the league, I was able to, I mean, you're in a class and they sat the oh, those league art, those league models were fantastic. Uh, they'll sit in the same pose for almost uh, a whole week. And sometimes I'll hold two poses at, in one particular composition, which I, I, I thought was mind blowing. I haven't seen that often <laughs> where, where the same model sits in two different positions. One hour they'll sit in one position and then mm -hmm. the next hour they'll sit in another. So I found that, I found that pretty uh, intriguing. Unfortunately, I didn't share with you some of my model work, but yeah, <laughs> maybe next time. <laughs> um... Let's see what exquisite work. Oh, let's see um, what gorgeous masterworks. You are so prolific. Thank you. I mean, your work was so varied. I think that's what was just a constant surprise. Just <laughs> such different types of expression. Just really, Thank really you. beautiful. Thank you. Beautiful. Thank you so anyone else that might have a comment or question? Go ahead, Lori. I just had a question about, there was a piece, um, it was a couple of pieces that you used, almost looked like um, tissue paper or toilet paper that was ruffled. Can you tell about that, those pieces? Yes, I will tell you. 
Um, actually, that happened during the time they had um, they had asked me to leave my classroom, and I was going to be surplused. And uh, I was, and it was an emotional upheaval time. Uh, but yet, in addition to that. Um, I was sitting, I received some art supplies and I remember opening up the box and, and these papers were beautiful. So I thought, why not put it into the composition? Why not put <laughs> the woman on the floor and have the lighting and have the duality of the, of, the, of the two individuals in the imagery? And then why not have this wrinkled paper along with it? Um, I wanted to also to kind of show the feelings of the woman, maybe um, that might have been a part of it, and maybe the maybe the inner tor turmoil that I might have been experiencing at that mm -hmm. time, with that idea of being surplused out of an area that I, I should not have been. Uh, but I wound up staying at the school after that moment and that time. <laughs> really interesting work. Thank well, you. Thank you. Yeah. I'd like to Anyone? encourage everybody everybody when you're thinking about gifting this holiday season. To me, the best and most joyful gifts that you can give yourself or someone else is a gift of art because you get to live with it every day. It brings you joy every day. And I know that Julie mm -hmm. likes to go outside a lot and so do I, but if I can't get outside, the art that's on my walls that have been made by different artists and it just, it gives such a, feeling of life to me, especially in these days when we can't go out. So I encourage you to purchase a piece of art. And I see other artists here. Kathy's here, Tom's here. I think I saw Pat Cummings, Marlene, Nancy was here. All artists who have been generous enough to spend, share their time with the Gallery of Art. And I hope <laughs> the Gallery of Light, geez, I've renamed us. So I hope, I hope that you will, you know, absolutely come to the next gallery opening where you'll see more work and hopefully you'll, you'll think about, gee, who needs another shirt, right? Who needs another shirt? You don't need another shirt. Who needs a pair of fancy shoes? You're not going anywhere anyway. You're going to be at home, baby. And if you're going to be at home, you might as be looking at something on your wall that inspires you, like any one of these artists here, I think Robin's here, her artwork, Julie's artwork, Tom's artwork, soon Pat's artwork, Marlene, all these artists who have been so gracious. Kathy, can't wait for that bracelet. So think about, think about it. What are you going to, what are you going to use your money for? Help an artist, help yourself, put a little joy in your heart. It beats a, an ugly sweater, right? <laughs> <laughs> well thank you for making a case for me to talk to mark thank you <laughs> <laughs> you can you can always find more room on your walls you know oh i don't know <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> no some some artists like um joy was saying one of her pieces somebody couldn't afford her painting and she had it made into a g-clay you can yeah. make those g-clays any size you want Itty bitty, super big. <laughs> no excuses. <laughs> Andrea, I see you here. I'm here. Our, I'm here. Our leadership team. I know you had asked what school um, Julie had worked at and you just found out later on. Yes, I saw on a slide later on. I just couldn't help but chat with one of my teacher loves, Jen, to say what a lucky school. That is to have you. These students, they get to see you every day. And that's amazing to me. I feel, I'm the one that wrote, I feel so privileged to be able to hear you describe what you were thinking when you did this work, to get to see it, and to think these students get to be inspired by that and share your skill with them. They're very, very fortunate. Um, and I just want to also thank the Gallery of Light because ladies, this is just, an area that you bring just so much to our lives by bringing people like Julie to us right into our homes. It's, it's just been inspirational to watch what you've created, Julie. Thank you. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Thank you, Andrea. Thank you, Andrea. Thank you, Rabbi. Thank you, Jen. 
Thank you, Enid. Rabbi, last words? Um, do we have Julie's website that maybe we can post in the chat? So I, I don't know if her pieces are in her on her website. Yes, some of them are. Actually, I'm working, still working on putting up more. <laughs> the never ending story. Yes. <laughs> You want to just say the name and for those people who aren't familiar with the chat and then what, what i'm oh yes i could put the slide back up you would just okay all right let me see if i could share julie's on zoom all day right <laughs> yes <laughs> let me see um there we go <laughs> there you go Someone playing an instrument? <laughs> oh, nice. yes. Oh, Mark. I'm sorry. Mark. <laughs> nice. Mark is practicing. Thank you, Julie. Julie I want you to know that you gorgeous. have, Thank you. You have an open invitation to share and to be with us um, always. And we're just so grateful that you were able to share your art and your creativity with us and inspired us. Um, I am not an artist. I do not fancy myself an artist, but I certainly can uh, appreciate it. And I'm in awe um, just to look at your work and to think that they're not photographs. I'm like, uh, my, I'm still doing stick figures. <laughs> so, um, you know, but I can truly appreciate, you know, all the work and the passion that went into it. In Judaism, there's a, a phrase, um, they called um, the creator of the Mishkan, the, uh, the tabernacle in the desert. Um, it is said that he was chosen because he had something called Chochma Lev, which translates as wisdom of the heart. And it's interesting that somebody who has such incredible creativity to, uh, to create works of art, it comes from the heart. It comes from a passion that's so deep within yourself that is... Um, not something that you can learn. You have it deep within you. And so thank you for sharing that chokhmah lev with all of us. And I like that. Thank, thank you. you. <laughs> that was beautiful. Thank you, everybody, for playing. Thank you. Looking forward to playing with you again soon. Bravo. Thank you, Marilyn. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, everybody. Thank Good luck you with guys. your show, Julie. Thank yeah. you. Beautiful, beautiful work. Thank you. Thank you. Congratulations. I love this part when nobody wants to get off. No, don't forget <laughs> to shut off the recording. <laughs> oh, <laughs> wait a minute. Let's just do that.